It's meme time, it's meme time Gather all your friends, it's meme time It's meme time, it's meme time The only cure for sadness Return to Sabadee Arc. After two years of training, Luffy is greeted by Hancock, Marigold, Sandersonia, Marguerite, and Yon, who are prepared to take him back to the Sabadee Archipelago. Luffy turns to a group of extremely large animals and tells them to back off from his friends. Sandersonia remarks that Luffy has become the boss of the entire island. Luffy complains that he can't eat those animals now that they're friends, but Hancock promises that food is waiting him aboard the ship. Luffy then reveals that Rayleigh had left him six months earlier than planned, as Luffy had learned all that Rayleigh could teach him about hockey. When Hancock brought up the idea of becoming Luffy's wife, Luffy bluntly refuses before thanking her. Luffy then put his straw hat back on, a symbol of the pirate straw hat Luffy returning from his vacation. The group then sets off towards the Sabadee Archipelago. After reaching somewhere close to Sabadee Archipelago, Hancock gives Luffy the cloak she wore to impel down, a fake mustache, and a large bag full of supplies. Luffy then leaves the Kuja ship on a small boat. While searching for his crew on Sabadee Archipelago, Luffy accidentally knocks over the imposter version of himself. The imposter demands for Luffy to stop, and threatens him to beg for forgiveness. Luffy just apologizes again and keeps on walking. This causes the fake to fire at Luffy who quickly dodged the bullet. He then knocked out all of the imposters using Haushokuhaki and keeps on walking, following the direction in which the Vivre card is going. Luffy decides to put on the fake mustache that Hancock gave him. He soon meets fake Zoro and fake Sanji, who he believed to be the real ones, and so follow them back to fake Luffy. As Luffy follows the fake members, he's led to fake Luffy on Grove 46 and brought up to a podium where the fake crew is. While the fake Luffy is about to announce his revenge on Luffy, the Marines, followed by pacifistas and Sentomaru, attack. While the recruits of the fake Straw Hats are beaten, the real Luffy is revealed to everyone present after Sentomaru takes out the imposter, who turned out to be a pirate called Three-Tongued Damalo Black, who's worth a mere 26 million berry and orders one of the pacifista to locate him. Luffy dodges a laser attack from a pacifista with Kenbon Shoku, and takes out the pacifista in one single Busoshoku imbued jet pistol. This indicates to all the spectators, to their surprise, that he's indeed the real Luffy. Zoro and Sanji greet him after the two take out a pacifista together. As Luffy begins to escape from the marines with the real Zoro and Sanji, he sees Rayleigh, and thanks him for everything before saying farewell to him by proclaiming, I'm going to be Pirate King, once more, and sets off to Grove 42. As the monster trio head back to the Thousand Sunny, they found marines blocking their way only for Perona to come and fend off the marines with her negative hollow. She then informed the trio that the marines were coming by the sea. They were then picked up by Chopper and a giant bird who quickly took them to the ship. Luffy then had a chance to briefly admire Frankie's new body before they were attacked. Hancock and the Kuja pirates came to Luffy's aid by intercepting the attacking marine ship. When Luffy revealed that he knew her, he gained the envy of Sanji while Nami and Usopp were surprised that Luffy was sent to Amazon Lily. They then started making preparations to leave, with Nami explaining on how a coded ship works. Luffy said to his crew that he has a lot to talk about and thanked them for following his two-year plan. Luffy then states that it's time to set sail for Fishman Island. With the marines held back by the Straw Hat's new allies, the crew submerged and headed for Fishman Island. Fishman Island Arc as the sunny submerges, Luffy gets excited and marvels at the scenery around him. He and Zoro then try to catch some fish, but are beaten down by Usopp and Chopper. When Sanji suddenly flies out of the bubble due to his nosebleed because of his weakness towards women, Luffy grabs him and pulls him back in. After Nami further explains about the coding, Luffy and Zoro once again try to catch some fish, but again they are beaten down by Usopp and Chopper. Seeing that Sanji is out of commission, Luffy then decides to share the bentos he got from Hancock with the rest of the crew. Frankie then reveals to the crew that the one who ensured the safety of the sunny, along with Hachi and Duval, during the last year was Bartholomew Kuma. He states that he found him sitting in front of the Sunny, and later Rayleigh told them that Kuma made a deal with Vegapunk to input a mission to protect the ship until a straw hat returns. As the crew wonders about Kuma's true intentions, Caribou and his crew are following behind them from a distance, trying to catch up. With their sea cow, the Caribou pirates eventually caught up to the straw hats, and they prepare for battle. Caribou quickly sets foot on the Thousand Sunny. However, before his crew can follow, his sea cow, which turns out to be Momu, fled in fear after seeing Luffy, Nami, and Sanji taking the rest of the Caribou pirates and leaving Caribou alone. The straw Straw Hats then tie up Caribou. When the crew travel through the deep currents and encounter a sea monster known as the Kraken, Luffy decides to tame it and have it pull their ship, much to the other's dismay. Luffy then realizes that they're underwater, which is a problem for him. Caribou then introduces Flutterkick coding to the crew. Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji then use it and fight the Kraken out in the sea. 
Luffy scolds Zoro for cutting some of the Kraken's tentacles before knocking it out with his Gomu Gomu no Elephant Gun. The monster trio defeat the Kraken, but because they're not wearing lifelines, they get separated from the ship as it goes down the underwater waterfall. Later, Luffy successfully tanned the Kraken and named him Sudame. Unfortunately, Luffy and Sanji's bubbles had broken, so they had to share Zoro's coating. After some searching, the monster trio eventually found the Thousand Sunny and the rest of the Straw Hats just in time for Sudame and saved them from the Umi Bozo. After reuniting with the ship, Luffy was then startled when he heard the undersea volcano starting to erupt. The Straw Hats managed to escape the eruption thanks to Sudame and Usopp's pop greens. Soon, the crew sees Fishman Island. Luffy then begins to wonder what kind of food there is in Fishman Island while drooling. Then a gang of sea monsters led by Hamond appear. Hamond gives the crew two options, join the new Fishman Pirates or die. As the Straw Hats prepare to run using Kuda Burst, Luffy gives Hamond a rejection. Hamon doesn't take kindly to Luffy's rejection and prepares to attack the Thousand Sunny. Frankie activates Kuda Burst and the ship flies through the bubble surrounding Fishman Island. After they pass through the bubble, they fell into a current and the crew is separated. Luffy then wakes up in Kami's house, where Sanji, Usopp, and Chopper are also there. Kami introduces them to some of her friends, the Medaka Mermaid Quintuplets. She then takes the four pirates to Mermaid Cove where they meet more mermaids. As the crew relaxes in Mermaid Cove, Luffy asks Kami if he can see Jinbei. When Kami informs him that Jinbei is not on the island, Luffy shows his disappointment as he was looking forward to meeting him. Soon, the Madaka Mermaid quintuplets inform Kami and the group that a royal gondola is approaching. Luffy, Usopp, and Chopper then hide behind cover while Sanji is being covered by a mermaid. The three brothers of the Neptune house appear, searching for the people who entered Fishman Island illegally. The mermaids deny seeing any intruders. As the three brothers are leaving, Sanji gets another massive nosebleed, making him lose more blood than ever before. While Sanji is in critical condition, Luffy, Chopper, and Usopp beg for a blood donation. Hamond and his crew then appear and tell the story of how Fisher Tiger supposedly died. After a gruesome battle, Fisher Tiger suffered a critical blood loss and could have been saved with a blood transfusion, but humans refused to help him. Hamon goes on to say that because of the humans who left Fisher Tiger to die, there's a law that prevents Fishman and Merfolk from sharing blood with humans. Hamon then attempts to capture the four Straw Hats, firing a net at them. But Luffy is able to dodge the net by sidestepping it and knock out the pirates with Jet Pistol. A sea monster tries to attack Luffy, but he subdues it with Haki. Kami takes the gondola and helps the four Straw Hats escape and takes them to the town port. And the four pirates find shelter in Madame Charlie's mermaid cave. Madame Charlie provides them a room where they can treat Sanji. Luffy and the others luckily come across Splash and Splatter, a pair of Okamas who happily agree to donate blood to Sanji. As Sanji is recovering, Luffy recalls that he got a scar on his arm after he attacked Hamond and his two companions. Luffy notices that the octopus merman managed to block his attack. Chopper checks Luffy's blood and sees that Luffy was poisoned and is amazed that Luffy's body is able to fight against it. Luffy then remembers an old four, Majilin. As Sanji is wrestling with Chopper watching over him, Luffy, Usopp, and Kami go to the Mermaid Cafe and meet Madame Charlie, the owner. Luffy and Usopp marvel at Charlie's crystal ball and learn that Charlie was the fortune teller. Luffy asks if Mermaid can poop, but gets quickly terrified of Madame Charlie. Kami then takes Luffy and Usopp to the front entrance of the Mermaid Cafe. Luffy shows his great disappointment when he learns that the Mermaid Cafe doesn't serve meat. The group soon meet Brooke and Papag, and they have a happy reunion. Papag delighted Luffy by offering him sea monster meat, and Luffy is glad that there's meat on Fishman Island. The group then travel by riding on a fish taxi, and Luffy sees a variety of fishman and merfolk. They soon come across a candy factory with Big Mom's Jolly Roger on it. After learning that Big Mom is the new protector of Fishman Island, Luffy comments that she must be a nice person and wonders if he'll meet her someday. After passing the factory, they arrive at Papag's house. Luffy and the group soon learn that there's a criminal clothing store on the first floor. As soon as they enter the store, they find Nami making complaints for the high prices. Papag says that the Straw Hats can have whatever they want for free. After hearing this joyful news, they empty the store much to Papag's dismay. They then hear a commotion outside of the store and they find that King Neptune has arrived to meet them. Luffy and the others are then invited by the king himself to his castle. Luffy and his group take a ride on a megalo while Neptune rides on Ho. On their way to the palace, Luffy spends his time sightseeing. Once they arrive at Ryugu Palace, Luffy marvels at the sight of it. After entering the castle, Luffy wanders away from the group in search of food. Luffy had followed his nose, but lost the scent. He saw a door that he thought the smell of the food originated from. The double door in question is huge, made of mostly metal, had two sets of handles, ring knockers high above and then regular handles near ground level. Embedded in the doors were three swords and a double-bladed axe. Embedded in the wall around the doorway was an axe, another sword, and the head of a morning star. Luffy, completely ignoring the weapons embedded in the doors and walls, thought the sturdy look of the walls reminded him of Impel Down. He wondered how good food behind that sturdy of a door could be. When he went through the door, it was pitch black. 
but Luffy saw food on the other side of the room, making him wonder if the room was the banquet hall. He then wondered if he had found the food vault. Luffy then decided he would only take a little bit of food as his stomach was at its limit. While running across the room, he crashed into something. He thought it was coral that felt really soft. When he first touched the coral, he heard a grunt, but thought it was someone outside. He then began jumping on the coral, comparing its consistency to pudding. He then hears someone ask if someone was in the room. A light suddenly came on, and Luffy suddenly began to fall. He falls next to a gargantuan, giant, smelt whiting mermaid, the mermaid princess, Shirahoshi. What he had thought was coral was actually the coarse material of her top, and the softness he felt was actually her breast. She asked him what he was doing on somebody else's body, and who he was. Luffy was amazed by the size of the princess. She then asked him if he were here to take her life too, and that she wasn't scared. She tried to hide her fear by saying she was the daughter of Neptune, but she couldn't hold back her tears, which were so big that Luffy had to actually dodge the falling water droplets. She then yelled for her father and brothers, as Luffy pointed out that he wasn't doing anything to her. As she continues crying, an axe thrown by Vanderdecken comes flying into her room aiming for the princess. Luffy deflects the axe, saving Shirohoshi's life. When the guard come to Shirohoshi's room, the princess hides Luffy from them. She tells the guards that that the noise they heard coming from her room was her having a bad dream. The Minister of the Right explains the situation with the Straw Hats. Once the guards leave, Shirahoshi speaks with Luffy. While Luffy's eating, Shirahoshi asks him many questions about the outside world and wonders how Luffy can eat so much while poking him in the cheek. Luffy snaps back and Shirahoshi starts to cry, saying that no one had ever yelled at her before. Luffy points out that Shirahoshi is a big crybaby, causing her to cry even more. Luffy then offers to take a walk with her outside the castle with him being the bodyguard. Luffy asks Shirahoshi where she wants to go. The princess says that she wants to go to the sea forest. When she starts crying again, Luffy starts to refer to her as weakling. Knowing that Shirahoshi's size will draw attention, Luffy comes up with a plan. As Brooke and the Minister of the Right arrive to her room, Shirahoshi exits the room stuffed inside Megalo while Luffy rides on the top of the shark. Once they leave the palace, Shirahoshi tells Luffy that in the sea forest, there is a grave that she wants to visit. Unbeknownst to Luffy, Jinbei is there waiting for him. While hovering above Coral Hill, Luffy sees Chopper, Sanji, and a bandaged Hachan. Once Luffy jumps down to meet them, he's met with accusations from the Fishman Island citizens for mermaid kidnappings. Megalo has finally reached his limit and spits out Shirahoshi. The Fishman Island citizens instantly concludes that this is a mermaid princess kidnapping. After tying up Luffy, Chopper, Sanji, and Hachan, the citizens discuss about what they should do with Luffy and his group. Once they decide that beheading them is the best course of action, Captain Deccan flies in on his throne piece of coral, demanding the princess to marry him. Shirahoshi refuses, saying that Deccan is not her type. Enraged, Deccan prepares to kill her. The citizens urge her to run, but Luffy tells her to stay where she is because he will not be able to defend her if she gets too far away. Luffy uses hockey to subdue the fishman restraining him, and using only his legs to smash the coral and pummel Deccan into the ground. Shirahoshi then unties Luffy, much to the surprise of the citizens. The princess, Luffy, and his friends then hop on Megalo as they attempt to flee the scene. Deccan calls out to Watatsumi to intercept them, but Luffy hits him in the mouth with a jet pistol, shattering one of his teeth. The group then continue their path to the sea forest. They soon reach the sea forest and meet Jinbei, Frankie, and Den. Luffy introduces Shirahoshi to Frankie and is overjoyed to see Jinbei again. Frankie then introduces Den to Luffy. After deflecting an axe thrown by Deccan, Luffy watches Shirahoshi pay her respects to her deceased mother. Nami and Kami arrive bearing terrible news about the Ryugu Palace. Jinbei then decides to reveal that he was responsible for allowing Arlong to run wild in the East Blue. Before Jinbei begins his explanation, Luffy displays his forgetfulness by not recalling what Yosaku said about Jinbei back in the East Blue, as well as forgetting the name Fisher Tiger. In the meantime, Luffy listens to Hachan as he explains the Fishman and Merfolk's dark history and to Jinbei as he explains the ideals of Queen Otohime and Fisher Tiger. Luffy sleeps through the whole thing, only remembering the very beginning when Otohime confronted the robber. After Jinbei finishes his story, Sanji wakes Luffy up by kicking him. A visual Denden Mushi appears, and the group watches Hody Jones' speech. After Hody Jones explains his plans of creating the new Ryugu Kingdom, he leaves a message for the Straw Hats. After he executes Neptune, he's going to drown Zoro, Usopp, and Brook. He then shows Luffy's wanted poster and says that he will make a fine example out of a 400 million berry bounty hen. Luffy celebrates his bounty increase, while Nami scolds him for it. He then decides that if Hody wants a fight, he has no other choice but to give it to him. However, Jinbei tells him not to go, as fighting Hody will add to the human fishman prejudice. Luffy, however, tells him that he has to save his crewmates, and that if Jinbei wants to stop him, he'll have to fight him. 
Luffy remains insistent on going to Ryugu Palace. He tries to hop on Megalo, but Jinbei stops him with Fishman Karate. Luffy counterattacks with a jet stamp, and Jinbei blocks it. The two then charge at each other when a clone of Robin suddenly appears before them. Before they collide, the clone vanishes, and Luffy and Jinbei hit each other. After the real Robin appears, Jinbei once again tries to reason with Luffy, but the Straw Hat Captain remains stubborn. Jinbei comes up with a plan that will make Luffy look like a hero instead of a villain. Luffy disagrees at first, but goes along with the plan when Jinbei agrees to give him all the meat he wants. Luffy goes to Gyonkor Plaza while hiding inside Megalo. He jumps out of Megalo's mouth at the moment when Hody is about to kill Neptune and attacks the coup leader, sending him flying back. After Jinbei shouts for the rest of the crew, Nami manages to steal back the World Noble's letter, as well as the keys to the royal family's locks, which Robin uses to free them. Above the plaza are the Thousand Sunny and Neptune's whale, Hoei. The Sunny blasts the new Fishman pirates from the Gown Cannon, while the whale rescues his master and the princes. The island residents ask Luffy if he's a friend or foe, to which he responds that it's their call to make. The rest of the crew then gather at the plaza and are prepared to engage Hody's crew in combat alongside Jinbei. Upon hearing that Hody ultimately plans to become the Pirate King, Luffy becomes enraged. When Hody orders his subordinates to attack the Straw Hats, Luffy unleashes a burst of Haushokuhaki and knocks out half of them in an instant. He then tells Hody that no matter what kind of king he plans to become, there can only be one Pirate King. Luffy activates Gear 3 and take out more of Hody's men. As the battle with the new Fishman Pirates commences, Luffy takes the time to gaze and admire Frankie's new weapons from the Soldier Dog system, the Black Rhino and the Brachio Tank. When Hody commands Tsurume to attack, Luffy reminds the Kraken that they're friends. Luffy then hops on Tsurume's back as the Beast attacks the new Fishman Pirates. When Hody threatens to kill Tsurume's family at the North Pole for disobeying him, Luffy understands why Tsurume had to join him. He then tells the Kraken that he'll protect his brothers too. He then walks over to Hody, enraged at the Fishman's threats towards Tsurume. He dodges the attacking pirates and gives the Fishman a swift and devastating kick to the Fishman's jaw. Hody then retaliates by punching Luffy's face, but due to Luffy's rubber body and Hody's amateur Fishman karate, Luffy's neck stretches back. Luffy takes advantage of the situation and uses a Bosushoku Haki to harden his forehead. When the Iron Shell Division comes to guard Hody, Luffy uses his head to smash right through them. He then uses his hockey again to harden his arm and block a kick from Hody, and then hardens his leg to give Hody a powerful kick of his own. Hody attacks with the Yabusame Barrage, but Luffy uses his Kenbun Shoku Haki to dodge it before giving Hody a hockey imbued punch that sent him flying. Luffy noted that Hody was tough when he managed to get back up. Upon seeing Shida Hoshi willing to sacrifice herself so that Noah would not destroy the island, and Hody climbing up underneath Noah to go after Vanderdeck in the ninth, Luffy told his crew that he's going up there. Upon receiving a bubble-making coral from Jinbei, Luffy grabs onto Sanji's leg and prepared to be catapulted up to Noah. After Sanji sends Luffy flying, he lands on one of the chains. Luffy equips himself with a flutter kick coating before he goes into the sea. Hody attempts to attack Luffy, but he's helped by Fukaboshi. Luffy tells Fukaboshi to take him to the deck of Noah, but Hody goes ahead of them. After Hody deals a devastating blow to Dekken, he tries to kill Shirahoshi. Luffy grabs Hody and throws him away. Hody is undeterred and still confident that Fishman Island will be destroyed and that Luffy can't do anything to stop it. However, Luffy's confident in his own abilities after his two-year training. When Shirahoshi changes her course, Hody attempts to stop her, but is grabbed by Luffy again. Unfortunately, Dekken passes out and the ship no longer follows Shirahoshi and begins to fall. Luffy then plans on destroying Noah, but Fukuboshi tells him that the ship is too important to destroy and that they should move it instead. As Luffy and the princes fight against Hody, he keeps interfering with their attempts to stop Noah. Luffy punches Hody into the ship, and Hody slices a hole in the air bubble in retaliation, preventing Luffy from boarding it. After Fukuboshi learns Hody's true character, Hody then tries to stop Luffy and Shirahoshi again, but Luffy breaks his kirisame and sends Hody flying back. And Hody once again gets up. Fukuboshi tells Luffy about how the new Fishman Pirates were formed out of hatred and resentment. As the prince laments on how everything has been happening, he asks Luffy to bring Fishman Island back to zero. Luffy tells Fukuboshi that he will not let anyone hurt Fishman Island because they are friends. Hody once again charged at Luffy, but Luffy managed to deliver a very devastating blow to Hody's chest. After the attack, Hody was sent flying towards Noah and crashed there. After getting up and seeing Luffy coming towards him, he eats more pills and prepares to attack Luffy. He uses a new attack called Murasame, but he fails as Luffy dodges his attack. Luffy then counterattacks using Elephant Gun and finally defeats Hody Jones. After Hody had been dealt with, Luffy starts destroying Noah. As he barrages the ship with his attacks, the wound he received from Hody starts opening up, much to Shirahoshi's horror. Luffy wrecks the ship piece by piece until Shirahoshi suddenly yells at Luffy to stop. Luffy then sees that the ship has been stopped by the Sea Kings. With the Sea King's help, Luffy no longer needs to destroy Noah. As Luffy faints from his wound, he's glad that everyone's safe. 
Luzi loses a lot of blood from the battle. Shirohoshi carries Luffy back to the plaza. Chopper requests a blood donor, but the citizens are reluctant to help. Jinbei volunteers to be Luffy's donor. During the transfusion, Luffy regains consciousness and asks Jinbei to join the crew. Not wanting to be thanked as heroes, Luffy and the others quickly leave the plaza. Jinbei declines Luffy's offer of joining his straw hats. Jinbei states that while he's grateful for the offer, he states that he still has unfinished business to attend to. But once that's all done, and if he still wants him to join, Jinbei will gladly join and Luffy agrees. One of Neptune's guards catches up with the crew and through a Dendenmushi, Neptune invites the crew to a banquet. Luffy gladly accepts and went to get Hachi and Kami first. They all arrive at the palace and have a huge party in honor of their victory. After partying for a while, Jinbei talks to Luffy and his present crew members about some important information. Jinbei brings them up to speed about what happened during the two years they were all away. He informs them about a dispute between Aokiji and Akainu over the position of Fleet Admiral. Akainu won the position and Aokiji stepped down rather than serving under Akainu. Jinbei then explains about the Blackbeard Pirates' rise to power with Blackbeard becoming an emperor. He also warns them that the Blackbeard Pirates are stealing the abilities of powerful Devil Fruit users for themselves. But Luffy ignores him and states that he works better without making plans. Luffy then senses something wrong and goes to check on Shirahoshi with Zoro and Sanji and finds Karibu trying to abduct her. Luffy saves Shirahoshi by sending Karibu flying out of the palace. When Nami finds out that Karibu has treasures in him, she sends Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji to capture him and get the treasures for her. The trio then find an unconscious Karibu and collect all the stolen treasures. On their way back to the palace, they spot a crowd in front of the candy factory. Luffy then casually tells Big Bomb's messengers that he ate all the candy. One of the messengers, Pekoms, then wonders what candy Luffy's talking about. However, his crewmate, Baron Tamago, interferes, asking if Luffy really ate the candy. Luffy says that he did, and Tamago explains that Fishman Island is under the protection of Big Mom, and the island will be destroyed if the monthly offering of candies will not be done. The Den Den Mushi rings, and Pekum says that it's Big Mom calling. Luffy picks it up and shouts, telling her that he's going to be the Pirate King, and that he ate all the candies of Fishman Island. Big Mom doesn't believe him at first, saying that he's only covering up for Fishman Island. Luffy strongly insists that he did, and offers treasures to the Emperor. Tamago then suggests Big Mom to accept the money. Because of the fact that the Kid Pirates sank two of their ships, Big Mom shouts at him, saying that she has decided to target Luffy in place of Fishman Island. Luffy challenges her, saying that he'll defeat her, and make Fishman Island his territory. Even though Luffy infuriates Big Mom, he still hands over the treasures to Tamago and Pekoms. The monster trio then return to Ryugu Palace and explain the situation to everyone there. The three then receive a beating from Nami for giving away the treasures. Later, when the Straw Hats are departing Fishman Island, Shirahoshi tearfully wishes for Luffy to stay longer, which causes Luffy to scold her for crying so much, and she apologizes. As the Straw Hats leave, Shirahoshi swears to Luffy that she'll stop being a crybaby. Luffy then makes a pinky promise with her that if they meet again, he will take her to the surface. After sailing away from the island, Luffy looks forward to seeing Shanks again. As they travel to the New World, the crew decides to catch some sea monsters to eat. As they try to catch some, they get caught in a white storm and are sucked in, but stopped by a group of whales that resemble Laboon. After Brook sings Bink's sake to pleasure him, they help take them to the New World's surface, and Luffy says the weather is perfect after everyone else commented on the weather already. L is for lovers who love one another. A is for ass, of which I like to eat. U is for you're the only one for me.